My name is Charlotte Page. I'm a senior tax manager um, specialising in VAT and other direct tax. So I'm actually talking about a fairly old case from 1992. Um, it's the case of Curtis Henderson, which was held jointly with the case of BioArch. Um, and it was a high court case and it concerns the um, recovery of VAT on the development of new residential property. So, um, as I said, the case is to do with the development of new residential property and when you can recover VAT um, relating to your costs on that development. Now, the first grant of a major interest in residential property um, is a taxable zero rated supply for VAT purposes. So because it's a taxable supply, it means you can recover your VAT relating to it. Now, um, the Curtis Henderson and Briarch cases, um, the taxpayer originally had an intention to make a taxable supply, but they actually ended up making an interim exempt supply. Now, with residential property, if you let the property, that's an exempt supply, and you cannot recover your VAT if you're making an exempt supply. So Curtis Henderson um, looked at the building of a house. Um, the idea was to build the house and then sell it. So they got the plan and permission, they completed it, and then they couldn't sell it because 1990s was around the time that the housing market crashed. Um, so they decided to let it in the short term, I think for about nine months. And HMRC basically said, oh, because you've let it, you've made a first um, you haven't made that first grant of a major interest. You haven't made a zero rated supply. You've actually made an exempt supply. So we want all the VAT back that you'd originally recovered from us. And Briarch was very similar. Um, in this case, the company had renovated um, some property. Um, they were going to grant a 25 year lease and that's a long lease for VAT purposes. So it would be a grant of a major interest. Um, but due to the collapse of a property market, they had to enter a short-term lease instead, um, I think for four or five years. And um, again, HMRC was saying, well, because you've made an exempt supply, we want all that back. back. Um, and in both cases, the High Court agreed there was a clawback of the AT, but it wasn't the entire amount because there was still an intention to make the underlying supply of the sale of the house in Curtis Henderson or the long lease in um, BioArch. If um, the taxpayer is already partially exempt, so they're making a mixture of both taxable and exempt supplies, then they should basically use the partial exemption um, method that they had in place at the time um, of the change of intention. Um, if they're not already VAT registered, um, or doing um, partial exemption calculations, then HMRC have said that basically you can use any fair method as long as it represents the actual use of those costs. So um, it could be a method based on value. So for example, the um, estimated value of the rents for four or five years compared to the estimated value of the, onward, the final sale, or it could be to do with number of years. Now. HMRC have actually said that they discourage people using the number of years because it's quite difficult to um, calculate the useful economic life of a building. Um, so for that purposes, based on the capital goods scheme, they probably say it's 10 years. And if your useful life is 10 years and you've done an interim letting of four years, four tenths could be quite a big clawback restriction compared to what you might be getting if you use the values-based approach. Because the um, clawback adjustment is um, part of the self-assessment VAT return, um, if HMRC came along and inquired into that VAT return, and as part of that inquiry, they were looking specifically at that adjustment, um, the um, our fees to assist with um, explaining that adjustment to HMRC and helping to show why it's fair and should be one that um, is allowed and reasonable, um, would be covered under the Tax Investigation Service. And because it's quite a complicated matter based on case law, you just don't know how long HMRC are going to keep coming back with more questions because it's very difficult to do something fair because it's quite subjective.